They just signed Jason Verrett. They have less than $800,000 in salary cap space. They seem like they're done until they at least get rid of Jimmy or restructure some contracts. So if this is it, if this is the team, there are some glaring question marks. One of them is center. Do you think the Niners are overly confident in their plan at center? I don't even know what their plan is. It seems like their plan is to just hope and pray that Alex Mack comes back. Yeah, they're definitely overconfident. I mean, who did uh, Kyle Shanahan and or John Lynch mention? These guys said, oh, Jake Brendel. And then maybe Daniel Brunskill swooping over. And they He said something like that. I looked over the transcript when I was looking over for the They said article. Jake Brendel's name like two or three times that weekend. Like, who the hell is Jake Brendel? I was like, excuse me, Jake Brendel, you're going to go from Alex Mack. Now, Alex Mack, he went to the Pro Bowl, but let's be real. He wasn't really a Pro Bowl caliber player last year. He was solid. He was fine. He was solid, but yeah. Yeah, he, was, he definitely wasn't Pro Bowl worthy. No, he wasn't. Um, but that's, yeah, it's, it's pretty much all chips on the table on Alex Mack. I figured at some point maybe they were going to draft one. I mean, look, the draft board fell as it fell. You can't really predict on certain players who you want, and a good portion of the you know consensus – top immediate prospects at center were pretty much already taken in the first two rounds. So it's kind of hard for the foreigners to really like, you know, like, Hey, let's just reach for a player that wasn't there. Um, but yeah, right now the plan at center is not ideal. If Alex Mack does not come back, they're in a whole heap of trouble. Yeah. They're totally at his mercy. And if our Alex Mack, I mean, he's smart. He went to Cal. He understands he holds all the chips here. I would get a raise. Hey man, I don't really want to play football anymore, but if you need me, I'll take an extra two, $3 million. Thanks. Because California is so expensive. It oh. seems like the Niners are basically saying, look, Alex, we gave you a contract, man. Like, what's it going to take? We're not giving up. Come on, please, please play. And if it, if he says no, then the plot, the plan is to have a competition between Daniel Brunskill, Donovan West. Like, I don't know what the plan is. Maybe bring in Hannes Grasso. Is he still in the league? Maybe they could get, maybe they could get Ben Garland. I don't, say Ben Garland. <laughs> I don't think they have a plan. I think the whole plan is to hope and pray that Alex Mack comes back, and maybe he will. But from Alex Mack's perspective, like, I mean, if they're going to a new quarterback, they're starting all these young players, like, are they even in? To me, the Niners are kind of telling us they're not in their Super Bowl window anymore. They are transitioning to a very young team, and they're trying to open a new Super Bowl window next year. They feel like their Super Bowl window closed last year. That's, I mean, I disagree with them. I think as long as they have Debo, they can contend. But they're like, well, we have a rookie quarterback. So, you know, we'll just, we'll just give our young guys as much experience as possible. So next year, we have a new window. And I, that's why I feel like they don't really care about their plan at center. It's like, you know, Alex Mack comes back. Great. It's not. Young guys will get reps. It's like, okay, well, what if none of them are good? I don't think I so much that they're kind of folding in on the season this upcoming year. I still think they're very well going to contend, and that's because of the NFC. That's because weak. of how confident they feel that they're going to churn out that young talent this year. Like, hey, we're going to get about like three to four of these players to be some key contributing role players, and they're going to factor into why we're in the playoffs, which is kind of weird because they didn't. How many rookies actually, or even young players, even helped them last year? Yeah. In that standpoint, other than Ambry Thomas stepping in as of an emergency outlet that I can think of on top of my head, but. That's essentially where I think the, where they're where they're thinking is um they're gonna forego free agency all this stuff and let's finally actually give some of these draft players that we're gonna bring in to see if we cannot make them as you know key contributors throughout the year because I think they're still in a good position with Debo Samuel most likely gonna return you have Trey Lance who you hope is gonna be someone who ascends throughout the year your running back situation looks pretty solid and obviously that defense is still should be stout. So I think it's still in a good position, and they're just going to have to hope that some of these offensive players, I mean, uh, these rookie, rookies that they drafted pan out, or even last year's rookies who are going to be the sophomore season ends up becoming players that, you know, what they drafted and hoped that they would be. I'm not saying they won't contend, but I'm just saying, like, the the, the pressure and urgency is different. Like, last year, they had yeah, to have okay. Josh Norman. You know what I mean? Like, they had to have starters, at vets at every position. They didn't trust any rookies until, like, unless there was an injury and they had no choice. They had to have Josh Norman. Now it's like, Kwan Williams, you're no longer welcome. Jaquaski Tart, goodbye. Like we we just want to have a competition of young guys just to see what we got. And that's they didn't want that last year. So why the difference? To me, it's it's about Trey Lance. Hey, if we're gonna do it at quarterback, we might as well do it at a, do it meaning play a guy who has no experience. <laughs> just go with the total unknown. If we're gonna do it at quarterback, then why don't we do it at six positions? So we learn as much about our young guys as possible and we can at least make us wiser. I don't know. I don't I don't agree with it, but that's kind of what I assess going on right now.
I just think my main concern of it all is because you have most of that influx or that most of that musical chairs going on at center interior wise, and you're going to have Trey Lance step into that situation. I mean, sure. It's great. The guy can move and he can scramble, but that's, it's not really ideal. You want him to still work within the pocket like Kyle Shannon and Watson. Now this guy's going to possibly have a bunch of like two to three new faces there. That's a rough start for him. Pressure in his face. He's, he might have a center who's never played center before or not a full-time center. So Alex Mack, I think you are in position to get a raise. Get that raise.